you look at charts long enough, you'll get that sort of a feel for them, you know, an understanding how they should move and what they should do next. But, you know, no one obviously knows what the future holds. I guess welcome back. I'm today sitting down with Jim Brown in Da Nang, Vietnam. What's up, Jim? Hey. Pleasure to see you here again. We've been hanging out a few times in the past few days, talking about trading and stuff, which is really cool. But today we wanted to do something different, which is talking about kind of what you trade your strategy in depth. We did a video in the past, like I think a year and a half ago, two years ago, yep. Yep. on kind of your lifestyle, the things that you yep. do and stuff. But I want to go more in depth about what you trade. Yep. And we'll go on your chart. Actually, you want to give some background on like kind of who you are, what you do first? Yep. Uh, name's Jim Brown, as Eddie and just said. Um, live here in Da Nang, have done for about three years, full-time trader. And basically have my, um, I've written three trading books, which are all available on Amazon, obviously. And I just support the readers and also trade full-time. So that's it in a nutshell. Well, loving the life here. <laughs> awesome, cool. So what has been kind of your progression in the past few years about kind of what you learned, how you went into trading, and did your trading style evolve a lot over time or was it always similar? Uh, it's been the same for quite a few years now, basically the same indicators. Uh, all I do is sort of change uh, slightly things a little bit different with regards to trade management. Might look at different time frames, try different ways of um, dealing with trades. Uh, but basically the actual trading itself, the signals, are, nothing's changed there over the last four or five years, I guess. Um, so it's not much as basically still on the larger time frames, you know, mm. the daily charts and that, which I'm a big fan of. Um, stay away from that day trading stuff. Yeah. So We discussed that earlier, the fact that you were trying day trading a little bit, but that I think the effort you put in for the return might not be worth it. Day trading is it's not my thing, only uh -huh. because it's more of a lifestyle choice. Um, I don't mind having a go at it every now and then, and I, I'm actually have some success with it. It just I can't don't like sitting looking at uh, charts for hours on end. That's all gives me a headache and does my head in basically. So yeah. Now before we go in, I think that people might be worried because they have a lot of like different tools that you use. Not many, but I think that. These are tools that people don't see all the time, like every day. Like we talked about yesterday, the TMA or different indicators that you use, use or you test. Oh, I test, yeah. I do like um, if one of my readers sends me an indicator to have a look at or I see something, uh, you know, I follow other traders and that. And if they have something that may be of interest to me, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll certainly get on the, put on the charts and have a look and see if it's something yeah. I could use. Uh, it's always interesting to see how other people think, um, how they trade. You know, and you know, you can have a look, and if it's something you could add to your arsenal or might help your own trading, then hell yeah, go with it. You know, yeah. but that's a really cool thing. But so, what is your thought process about adding something to your chart, yeah, your strategy or your chart? Do you have like a, a process you go through first? Just so people understand kind of why things that you use now are, are there. Um, yeah, look, it started with just I used one indicator, it's just a, a modified MACD sort of thing, mm -hmm. and I'll. I had access to that probably years ago. I can't remember, oh, six, seven years ago. And that's my sort of go-to indicator. And from that, I've, um, I found another indicator, which is the QQE Advanced. Um, a little bit tricky. It's a, yeah. a fair bit of mass involved in that one. So I've combined those two indicators to build my own, which is when you see the charts and that, you'll see the, the green and red dots on my chart, price chart, and that's all it is, uh, something I had built. But other than that, I might... I might play with, I've built my own other custom indicators I may use to help filter trades, but generally um, it's pretty clean sort of chart, so no, nah, I, I, I try not to yeah. get too technical or make it too confusing. From what I see now, it's quite simple, quite straightforward, but it's just that like, you use things that people might not see all the time, which is Oh yeah, yeah, it's, they're all custom indicators, yeah. um, and it's funny because I get a lot of questions about, oh, can you tell me how it works? And, that's when I get, even I don't know how it works. You know, I just do that, know they do work and that's all I need to know, you know, yeah. so. Because I've been looking at it for years and you, be, I guess I become a bit complacent and a bit, yeah. you know, just assume that everyone else knows what they are, but. But you do get the feeling when you see something over and over again all the time. Oh yeah, I yeah. I suppose so, just well, once. Yeah, yeah you, you know, when you look at charts hours on end, yeah. you do begin to, uh, recognize patterns and you get a sort of a feel for the market um how would you put it 
not a, not a gut feel, but you have a fair idea what's coming up next. Yeah. But nothing will surprise you. But, you know, like you look at charts long enough, you'll get that sort of a feel from, you know, an understanding how they should move and what they should do next. But, you know, no one obviously knows what the future holds. But Yeah, of course. So. Cool. So I guess let's go into the chart and kind of maybe share whatever you want to share, of like your process, things that you look at. Maybe kind of a quick overview of like the chart and what you are looking yeah, for. Yeah, no problems. So basically I'm always looking at the daily charts. So I think this is the uh, – I'll just go back in time because this is a USD Japanese yen. So basically that spike down was the first trading day of the year, which we all know about this year. Yeah. So we'll just go back in history a bit just to – I'll just pick a nice random spot here. Uh, all right, so my chart's basically, as I said, it's a daily chart, candles. So I don't, don't, candles are just a good thing for me. I've got three uh, moving averages on here. That's a 50, the brown one, uh, 100. They're both EMAs, and that's a 240 LMA. So it's just a um, linear weighted moving average. There's no rhyme or reason why I've picked them. They just work well for me, as you can see here. When they're stacked in that order, 240, 150, in that, um, like that, you can see that's an obvious downtrend there. So no dramas there. It's pretty straightforward. This indicator below here is the MACD Platinum. It's just mm -hmm. a, um, it's just a normal MACD except it's got a feature in here, uh, zero lag. So that makes all the difference. If that's set to false, it'll just look like a normal MACD standard. Um, settings 12, 26, 9, but I'll leave it at zero lag, which again, you can Google that and work out. You, you'll see not so much zero lag MACDs, but if you Google zero lag moving average, it'll give mm. you a description on what it actually is. So so the, the gist of this MACD here, this horizontal line is the zero level. So basically, if the MACD is above the zero level, I'm looking to sell. If it's below the zero level, I'm looking to buy. So, for example, here where the crosshair is, it's above zero. There's a red dot on the MACD Platinum here, which is like basically a cross. It's probably a little bit hard to see, but there's a blue line there. It's just when they cross. So I'm looking to sell. When I get this red dot up on the price chart here, that's my signal to sell. And look, in hindsight, this is obviously a good trade. We're yeah. in a downtrend here. But say if we're looking this one here to buy, as I said, the MACD is below the zero level, so I'm looking to buy, green dot to buy, could buy, it, take it up there. So that's the gist of it. Now, these red and green dots, they're a combination of two things. Now, I don't have it on my chart, but if I put on, like I said before, I mentioned the QQE advanced. So it's a pretty straightforward indicator which is I just put on the chart now I don't need it on my chart because I don't look at it um, but I need it loaded on my platform for the what I call the QMP filter mm -hmm. it's a, I know the terrible names QQE and QMP <laughs> so these red and green dots are a combination of the cross on this QQE and the blue dot sometimes they happen together like on this one where the crosshair is so the, the green dot that blue dot and the cross all happen on the same candle. Other times, the next one, we had the red dot there, but we didn't get the confirmation until the QQE crossed, hence the red dot, which will, none of these indicators repaint, so, and I don't take any signals mid-candle, so it's only, um, it's only um, at the close of the candle. So that dot will appear when this candle, the next candle here opens. So... And that's all it is. So I, this I just I don't need it on my chart because this tells me enough here. Um, so I, I delete that. So what I'm looking to do, for example, uh, one I could just take the trade. So if I took the sell trade here, which wouldn't be ideal in my world because I like to see price actually come back towards closer to the MAs. But just say I took that sell trade there. You could go the traditional way where I just take place a sell trade down here and place, a, say, a stop above the highs. Um, gen generally, I wouldn't do that. So I would take that sell trade, for example. So I took it with one lot. Then suddenly there's a buy signal there, but it's not a, it's not a, um, a valid buy signal because this 
MACD is not below the zero level. But what I might do is take another buy there to hedge that sell. Um, so I'm basically locking in a loss there. I know everyone can't do um, hedging, yeah. hedging yeah. but there's ways around it. You know, mm. you can just open a second account. And what will happen there, because the MACD is still above the zero level, I'd be looking for is it going to be a sell signal eventually, which there is here. So if I sold on that one, one lot, bought one lot, that one there I'd sell three lots. So then this would drop away and there'd be enough position size there to, I'd have an overall break even. So I'll bring up like a, um, where's my spreadsheet? So I've got a spreadsheet like this. So I can put multiple trades in. So hit this for an example, actually, um, there we go. So I got sell, sell, buy, you know, this is just an example. This is not the mm. actual chart we're looking at. Um, and here it can, it tells me how many positions I've got and what, if I'm hedged or if I'm net short or net long, and it'll give me a break even price. So I just, okay. I just punch those figures in and I mark my chart up with a break even price, which in this case would probably be just around this level somewhere. And price falls away, I can close, say, that trade, that trade, and part of that trade. So it's just the way I trade, you know, like. Okay. Um, you can get in strife with it, like, uh, for example, say here, I, for some reason, I took the buy there. Oh, this one actually works out all right. So if I took the buy, then I took the sell hedge. Doesn't matter, price falls away. Once you've got the hedge on, you can't lose any more other than, mm. you know, like an overnight interest rates or your swap okay. rates. So so if I took the buy, took the sell there, same position size, can't lose any more. So then I'll just be waiting patiently for this buy signal here, jump in that buy with a bigger position, and you can see it takes it up. So that's that's sort of so So the the hedging is kind of acting similar to a partial take profit? Um, it can do, like um, the problem with the hedging is uh, I can get in strife. I'll see if I can find an example where, uh, all right, so for example, here. Now, there's a sell, say there's a sell signal here. Now, this is probably not a trade I'd take because price is in the MA, so it really doesn't look like a good setup. But say I took the sell there, took the buy there to hedge it, See, the MACD is still above the zero level. Now, take another sell there and look how far price goes up. So if I took a sell, a buy, so I've locked in a small loss there and took a bigger sell there and it, it goes up and that, I'll be losing a lot there, you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I took another hedge, so I could take a second hedge buy, the same as that one, and take another sell. Now. If that sell was enough to get me out of all those positions, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, you know. So big trend like that, but I wouldn't take that original sell trade, but it can get you in trouble. So all the, all the hedge is doing um, is basically if I'm entering without a stop. So I know a lot of people don't like doing that and, yeah. you, know, you know, I'll get shot down in flames, no doubt. Um, but a lot of my trading on the daily charts, so I took a sell here, you know, no, most people have put a stop up here somewhere just above the, the current highs. Yeah. Uh, me, I wouldn't put a stop in there because I'd be looking for the hedge to protect me. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you can see um, pro the cells there goes against me. And as soon as the, the MACD starts to go through the zero level, down the other side of that zero level, I'm, I'm looking to start protect that position. So I might be, say, um, scaling out and place them placing an overall break even stop, give it a bit of room. And you can see how the MACD goes down and you get the cross in the MACD. That's a good time to be either out of that trade or really tighten it up. And then naturally look at the next one, that buy there, which is a great signal. I know this is all in hindsight, but you know, prices come back to the MAs. The MAs are spreading, they're stacked to the upside. The MACD is a long way below the zero level. There's your buy signal there. Look, you know, that's a great one there. Another another big part of my trading is um, divergence, which is uh, one of my books is actually all about divergence. And I'll see if I can find some examples. So here's an example, all right. Um, and all I go look when I look for divergence, basically from these dots. Just use them, the lows or the highs near these dots. 
So we have a low here and a low, a lower low there. Now you look at the corresponding down here, low is here and it's a higher low there. Mm -hmm. So if you draw the old trend line somewhere, so you draw that one there, you can see it's pretty obvious. This is one of my bread and butter sort of signals. So even though you can see the MAs are pointing down, so we're in an obvious downtrend. If I'm going to go against that downtrend, I want to see divergence. Okay. If Does I, that mean that, that you go now in the market or you would kind of take it as a sign to go in later? No, as soon as I get that green dot, I'm taking the buy there. Okay. So I would be drawing that every day I'm drawing on my charts. I'm looking at my daily charts once a day and I'd, if I if I may draw a line just to give me a heads up when it's when it's happening, you know what I mean? Like um, so I can see it and as soon as I get that green dot, I just know it's time to go, time, time okay. to take the buy. Cool. You know, it's a bit close to the MAs, but you write it up and you know, it's not a great signal, this one, because you're through the MACD already, through the zero level in the MACD pretty quick. But, you know, generally you could drive price back up towards that 50 EMA. Mm -hmm. So so you can look at this. I'll bring up another pair just to show you. It's um, oh, the pound USD. It's a pretty popular pair. So i get rid of all that crap. So same deal here. Like here's an example that we'd hedge the sell here. MACD above the zero level. Um, and that's probably a sell I take. Price has gone up and hit the 240 LMA. You've got the, you know, the resistance sort of level across the left there. So you take the sell, but it did, doesn't go far at all. Then you get that buy signal. See, it's still above there. I would take that buy there. So hedge it, and the next sell. And this is one that goes sideways, then, and you sort of end up not not in a great position. You know what I mean? Like it's. Uh, and you might have to take another buy, another sell, another buy until you get out it, work your way out. Or you could just do the traditional way, take a sell, put a stop in place there. You're not getting much out, you get stopped out. Take a sell, get stopped out. So there's, but generally you can see that the MACD buy, MAs are heading up, good trend up. Um, see if I find divergence. Uh, is a divergence up here. There's a good across here. Pretty obvious across the highs there and here. See that? Yeah. So to me, if I'd had that marked my chart, price is moving away from the MAs. You've probably got, if you even go um, across here, you'd probably say, well, there's a double top even forming. So you've got a combination uh, resistance level, mm -hmm. divergence, get a sell signal there. It's against the trend, but I've got all this other confluence of, and take the sell and look at that, just drops away nicely. And then, then straight away, you can look, I'm looking already at the, going the other way then, because look at that. You got, um, you know, price going down, MACD's going up, take that buy back up there, then back on the sell. So, how do you know how far to go on your trades? This is based on the EMA. Um, combination of things, if I'm trading against the trend, it's normally into the, as soon as I get back into the, uh, price gets back into the MAs, I'll start looking at scaling out mm -hmm. and putting the stop in, or price crosses through the zero level, back to the other side of the MACD, and especially when it gets like down on this one, so I took that sell up here, goes see crosses in there somewhere so I'm already well and truly in profit and with prices in uh, prices in the MA so I'd be already half out and I'd probably have a stop somewhere near but that'd be my entry level in there I'd probably have a stop up here so that can't lose on that position at all give give the stop a bit of room still but I've already closed out half so I could put my stop the same distance above the point of entry but as soon as I get this blue dot down here it'd be really tightening up might drop down to a four hour chart it's tighten my stops up or something like that um i'm not one for the as you know risk reward or anything yeah, like that yeah. but and you know a trend can go for a long time and go for a short time you don't know so you prefer to adapt to the market and see what the market's going to yeah, do yeah yeah look get a yeah and it doesn't worry me i might take a uh, for example here say i rode this sell trade down and i got this buy signal i might still leave have a stop say up here on my on my sell trade then 
take this by. So I'll have mm. a cell, partial cell, and a full by position, just in case that by turns pear shape. You know, and so you can see price rolls over here, and there's a possibility of sell. We're in a, getting in a downtrend. You know, so it's predominantly you'd want to give the sell more room than the buys. Sort of nip the buys pretty quick mm -hmm. if you did take any. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a um, and I've got uh, there's one other filter. I'm not going to add it to the chart. It sort of gives me an idea. It's just an overbought, oversold on RSI, which is just another indicator I can throw on there. But um, so generally, you can take I could take if your MAs are like this, every time I see a sell signal and the MACD is on the right position, take it, take it, take it. Because to me, it's just like the old, you're in a downtrend, they're just retracements. Yeah. So, and that, that red dot, you know, you could work, do the same thing without these red dots, but I'll just like them on the, I'm more, you know, like I like to see things to tell me to get in, get out, you know, more mechanical than sort okay. of discretionary. So in the case of your sell trade, you need the magnitude to be above zero yep, and so below zero for the for buys, the, uh, buys. Unless price. I'm hedging or something yes. like that. The only time I might, if I've got divergence, uh, I don't know if I can find an example, but if, for example, um, if I've got divergence and it's a good, looks like a good setup, if the MACD is on the wrong side, as long as one side of it's on the right side, if okay. that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, divergence is everywhere, and you know you've got regular divergence and hidden divergence, and so basically regular divergence, which is what everyone looks at, is like this one here. Uh, sorry, this is um, hidden divergence. So you've got price continuing up. You can see the MAs are in a downtrend, and on the MACD. It's going down. So this basically tells me that sell, which I'd normally take anyway, um, that'd be a good trade because to me that's hidden divergence. It basically means the trend's continuing. It goes down a little bit, but you know, I'm just trying to use an ex give you an example. Whereas your normal regular divergence is more the, uh, like this one here. So it's a little bit tricky for some people because you know, everyone sees this sort of divergence. And this is normally a trend reversal, which is a high risk type of trade. And again, because the MAs are going down, so that sell trade there previously would have been a great signal. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. You know, we're in a downtrend, you can see the MAs. As soon as I get a signal sell, take it down. Now, price goes through the MACD, and we get a bit messy down here. So then we get this divergence form. And I'd be happy to take that, even though it's a, against the trend, but it's divergence gives me the confidence okay. to take it. So what's the difference between the two divergence types um, exactly? Regular, there's regular divergence, which is the most common one that everyone's mm -hmm. sort of familiar with. So um, let's see one. This is hidden bearish divergence. This is, this is from um, baby pips, so anyone get access to this. It, it Hidden, a lot of people have get confused because they all look the same, basically. Yeah. But if you have a look at this, and you, you know anyone watching this video can obviously pause it and read about it. There's, there's a description up here all about it. Um, so you can see the lower highs, high highs. So this is the price chart. That's what I look at the MACD. So it's a price MACD. So we go across hidden bullish divergence, high lows. So price is going up higher, and that's the um, MACD is going lower and these your regular divergence see price is going higher MACD is going lower and that normally means a trend reversal and there's the, just the other one same thing price is going it's a little bit tricky yeah, yeah, and it's probably yeah. got I haven't got enough time to do it but you know, yeah it's it's not I know a lot of people get um, confused about it so if you need to learn more about this to make sure you pause the video, go back on the chart. And yeah. See the Look, just go to Baby Pips yeah. in their, what do they call it, their school of pipology or whatever, <laughs> and it's got a whole thing on divergence. Um, oh, I love it, yeah, especially if I'm going to trade against a trend you, you want. Like, yeah. You know, it's, you know when, when the market's a bit sideways like this, you can see the MAs, and like these are MAs, so that they, you know, in here I'm happy to trade either way. So if you've got to say, for example, yeah, sorry about that. You got the um, the buy signal here. The MAs are all very tight. 
MACDs below the zero level, take the buy. Take price up, cross MA, start thinking about getting out. Still very tight, get the sell signal, MACDs above this, trade it down. Buy, below, trade it up. You know, you can do that all in a perfect world, that'd be easy, easy way to make money. Yeah. Um, so, and this MACD, as you can see, it always meanders around the zero level. It always crosses the zero level, just like any normal MACD, but the zero lag just makes it a little bit different. But you can see all these setups, and you know, as I said, these indicators don't read paint, and they're, they're look at that trend, nice big trend up. Uh, again, I know it's hindsight, but if you just took, uh, what have I done? Press the wrong button here. If you just took the buys, you know, that one's not going to give you much, but you know, but you cross that zero level, and you're looking at getting out. Uh, then this next one here, price has come back into the MAs nicely. Take that, get a few pips there. Take this one, there's your buy, you're in an uptrend. You can see you're in an uptrend. Here's one you could hedge. Take the buy, goes against it, take the sell, hedge. So two same position sizes, locking in a loss. And this is how I normally trade. Then there's your buy again, take a bigger position. Nice, goes up. Then you look across here, you can see divergence from here to there. Just against the trend, start going down. And it gets messy in here. <laughs> yeah, there's no, yeah, it looks good. Of course. When I'm picking, I'm cherry picking good trades there. But if you went long there, and you want to use the hedging technique, you're going to lock in a pretty big loss between that buy signal and that sell signal. But look, the MACD is still below the zero level. There's your new mm. buy signal. Take that bigger position size. I can guarantee your break evens in that on that spike somewhere. Close out all your trades, and you start. Then you're in a downtrend. You start trading this to the downside. This is a daily chart. Or another option you've got, which I do sometimes, if I've got a signal that's one of these signals here that's probably not as good, you know, because I, I like to see price go back to the mm. MAs. But say I took this one here, for example. I might not take it on the daily chart, but what I'll do is I'll maybe drop down a four-hour chart. I'll set up an EA that's based on the same sort of indicators on a four-hour chart just to take sell trades. And if it goes against me and the four hour doesn't present a sell opportunity, then so be it. I haven't lost anything because the four hour. So my trading style basically stays the same. It's all based on what you're looking at here in this chart. It's just a different ways of managing trades. Yeah. You know, whether you use the traditional it, yeah. stop or the hedging or drop down a lower time frame. You know, so there's, there's plenty of options, but uh -huh. the signal's so that's my bread and butter. That's and it, mate. <laughs> that's the key because, like, people might sit it up, but they need to know how to manage the trade. Like, how to, like, what to do when you're in the trade and where to exit, where to, yeah, kind of go out. So, yeah. And look, it's, and with all my trading, and I, look, you know, as you know, I sell books, and this is the high probabilities in one of the books. Yeah. The divergence is another book. Um, I tell people to take my stuff, take these indicators, make it their own, you know. I just yeah, give yeah. them a framework. You know, if you want to add the CCI or Bollinger Bands or, you know, use support and resistance or use round numbers, add a FIB mm. tool, knock yourself out, you know, like yeah. whatever you're comfortable with. But this is all I need, you know. And look, even on this, if I just say, for example, didn't even worry about the MACD, all right? So delete that. And if I just look, took trades on every one of those dots, doesn't matter, buy, sell, and just placed a, say, a stop, Above or below, it's like you get killed in places like this. But you know, look, nice little downtrend there. If you place your stop just above the dot, take it down. Uh, you probably get killed in there. But another one here, nice one up. You goes against you, then goes up. Mm -hmm. But generally, a lot of the times you'll find that these these dots, which is a QMP filter, which I you already explained, are in pretty good spots. You know, like yeah, and you can just trade this if you want to. You know, you're going to take a few losses, but geez, if you keep it nice and tight, some of those, and like I said, these don't read paint, so that dot's there. Once it's formed, it doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you take your sell on the open of this next candle, same deal there. So that's, that's the, the system in a nutshell, mate. That's it. Awesome. So, um, I'll just bring up the template. So let me see. Uh, high probability. Are there any things that you look at? that are more discretionary, like things like, let's say, the trend or when markets are too tight, sideways is like too tight. Do you look at that ever or no? Nah, look, 
because I um I basically follow all twenty eight pairs, yeah. so the eight currencies just all split up, and I look at gold and silver. Um, there's some pairs this year that have gone basically sideways. Look at the euro yen or the yeah, yeah. Uh, euro Even Aussie. Euro USD. It's been pretty. Uh, yeah, pretty actually, I don't. A lot of people love the euro USD. It's one pair I yeah. don't really trade that often. I'm starting to not like it. So <laughs> yeah, it's good. well. I think 70% of the population trades it. Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Um, it's just it's a bit fickle sometimes, mm-hmm. and um, so I don't mind trading the any of the other pairs, the yen pairs or the pound, um, a lot of the Aussie pairs, but yeah, it's your it's your home currency that does my head in, the Canadian, the USD. <laughs> yeah. That thing just goes on tear sometimes. Awesome, yeah. So you don't look at those and you just go through the charts. Yep. How long does that take to go through the 28 pairs of trade? Not long, mate, not long. Um, because it's only once a day anyway, so that helps. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I, like, my routine doesn't change much. I've got, I get up at six o'clock, here in AM, which is uh, at the moment the New York Candles two hours before that, so at 4 AM here. So I get up about six, um, go to, I've got a profile all set up, all the charts. I know what's open, what's not. I just rip through each one because every day I'm looking at them. So every day I might add, say, uh, the trend lines for divergence, or I might put a, a line on my chart saying, watch this, make a note on the chart or something. So the next day when I wake up, because I'm straight on the chart as soon as I wake up, I'll go through them quickly. And what I do is I go through them because I, I, I um, because with the books, I've got to support the readers. I, I post um, screenshots of any trade setups every day in my Facebook group. So, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll basically call the trades because I like the, the transparency of um, calling the trades as soon as possible and mm-hmm. letting the Facebook group yeah. know. I've called these trades. It's not a signal service. It's just to show the method that I... Mm. Uh, yeah, show the process. Yeah, show the process. Yeah. So I'll do that, rip through them all, make some notes like you. I keep a notebook and a pen next to my um, laptop and just write down everything. And I, I post that straight away. And what I do is I'll go and have a coffee or breakfast or something and I'll come back to the charts and I'll, then I'll do some screenshots for the, the uh, Facebook group, and which I share, then do another update, double-check the charts, you know, it probably takes me longer because I'm um, doing it for the Facebook yeah, group. If I was, doing it, yeah, if I was yeah, doing it for yeah. myself, no big deal. Yeah. I just do my notes on my chart as I go. Yeah. So then you, you know, I've got to update my spreadsheets, and I'm all done basically with, within two hours. That includes. That's good. You know, doing my other stuff like meditation, affirmations, um, tidying up my spreadsheets, doing my screenshots because I share all my screenshots. So any any trade I take off. Or I have to write notes on the screen so people look at it and go, oh, this is what he did with us if he put a stop in. And if I modify any trades, I've got to call them in the Facebook group so they know if I uh, do a partial close, close out, uh, a tr- trade, set a stop, all that stuff, I, I update them with everything like that. So it takes a while, but it's only because of the support for the readers sort of yeah, thing, you know. Yeah. But generally, and once I finish that, I can shut down that profile and don't look at those charts again until the next day. So it's no no drama there. So. Cool. Then I go do my stuff. Take, <laughs> take my paddleboard out and yeah, the yeah. ocean is. And the ocean, of course. <laughs> People will wonder how they can get these indicators that you use. How can they get them? Oh, you can Google them. you probably find them around. They say they are custom indicators. Look, there's, there's nothing tricky about them. Um, anyone that buys any of the books gets those indicators. It's basically only three plus like you know, so if you got the, the MACD Platinum, which is just a zero lag MACD, which you can Google and probably find one. The QQE Advanced, which is a, not a common indicator, but it's not, it is a custom indicator, readily available. And, but the other one, the red and green dots, that's actually my baby. I've had that one built. And that's just the QMP filter and Q's, all, all the Q stands for QQE and the MP stands for MACD Platinum. So it's just, oh, yeah. a, all it is a combination. Combination. Um, so if you, when people buy my books, that those indicators are part of the download package. So, yeah, but you can find them. You awesome. look hard enough on Google, you can find them. <laughs> cool. Awesome. How many books have you written so far? Ah, uh, three, mate. Three. Awesome. Few more, three months coming, I'm sure. Eh, yeah, look, I'm <laughs> two minds. It's you got to have, yeah. But the books I've written are good because one, the first one I think, the forex trading, the basics explain. I was just getting. 
and this was a few years ago. I was, I was just getting the shits with basically people. There's no place where it was all spelt out in simple terms. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I like to keep things pretty simple. So that book was written just to help people understand the basics of Forex, you know, where to start if you'd never traded before. It's a, it's a good book. Then what I've just shown you on the charts, that's my high probability method, and that's the name of the book. And when I added divergence to the mix, I've made a, a sort of a, a, a second book based on that high probability, which is the, my divergence book. And that's that's my bread and butter trading. So that's that's what I base everything on. That's awesome. And I've met people that read your book or had your book in their hand <laughs> in different countries, Romania and different places. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. I like I, that. I think that's really nice. Yeah, that's really cool <laughs> to, uh, to know and to see. So I appreciate you for your work, Jim. It's awesome. We'll put a link below for your books. People can check them out and, uh, and grab the books. Yeah. Read, through, read through them and improve. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you comment below the video. Let me know your thoughts, of course. And we'll catch you guys pretty soon. Good on you. Thanks, Adrian.